Hi. Do you want to do fast and precise cuts? Do you also think aligning and clamping a provisional fence is annoying? Elastic. Instead of buying a table saw, would you rather save money and build one yourself? Then you're at the right place. I will show you today how I built my table saw. It's powered by a handheld circular saw. Best watch the complete video because I will talk about the realization of every individual component and their challenges. For example, the splitter. My circular saw doesn't have a splitter, so I had to build one myself. And I will show you in this video how I did that. What I also will show you is the table extensions. I have here two options. What are their advantages and what are their disadvantages? That and a lot more. If you haven't done so yet, then please subscribe to my channel and press the notification button and you'll never miss a video again. I use for the table saw 120 by 80 centimeters and 25 millimeter thick coated plywood. With that, the table is exactly the same size of my workbench and later she'll have the same height too. By the way, if you also want to build yourself a workbench, you can follow this link to my video. I will also add the link into the description. It is definitely worth taking a look. I'm rechecking the right angle of the corners and they are perfect. As reference edge, I use these two edges. By the way, I use coated plywood because it has a smooth surface. That is, for example, helpful for the fence. I'll let the circle of saw into the tabletop. I can only recommend to take your time when marking the cutout area for the saw. I personally measured and checked multiple times. It is important that the saw runs absolutely parallel or orthogonal to the reference edge. For milling, I'm using the router guide. It is idea for such a job. I will add a link of the video on how to build it in the description. Milling of plywood produces a lot of wood dust. You should always wear a mask and goggles. fits perfectly. Next, I will cut out a section for accessing the circular saw. I use the support plate of the circular saw as a template. So that the saw doesn't tilt, I use some of these rest pieces as support. I rework the edges with the router. Now I disassemble the guard. I use this metal for creating something to mount the circular saw to the table.
Safety is always very important. That's why we need a splitter. I have to build one myself as the splitter isn't intended for my circular saw. First, I drew a stencil on a piece of cardboard. I then transferred the splitter onto a sheet of metal. This metal is tempered and fortunately has the correct thickness. In particular, you have to ensure that the splitter is smaller than the tooth width and wider than the main blade. When you use the angle grinder, you should always wear protective gear. Those are at least gloves, goggles and an earmuff. So, I'm finally done with the splitter. I really worked a long time on it. It's already the fourth version. I also have built other kinds. None of them fit as I wanted to have them. This took probably the longest to do for the whole table. But now, I'm finally done and I can move on. Now I need to saw a slot into the board for the splitter. I mounted the splitter from the bottom with two corner braces. You have to ensure that they are exact orthogonal to the reference edge and directly behind the saw blade. This is now the top and here is the hole I sawed out. The insert plate has to come on top. I will mill a recess around here so that the insert plate fits into the board. Now I have here a thickness of around about 10 millimeters. That means the insert plate can't be too thick. I would say maximum 5 millimeters. The problem is I don't have a 5 millimeter plywood. So I will mill this rest piece of wood down to 5 millimeters, and then we can keep going on. Purposely mill the recess one millimeter more than the insert plate's thickness. Afterwards, I can then bring the insert plate to the correct height with duct tape. Now I use duct tape to get the insert plate on the same height as the tabletop. 
Work pieces are not allowed to get caught on the corners. Therefore, I'm testing the evenness with this rest piece. Here I used two nails to prevent that the insert plate spins up. I took this idea from Frank's Shed. He's also a YouTuber and has great videos. It's definitely worth looking into his channel. The safety guard goes directly on the splitter. Of course, my logo belongs in here. Do I still need this screw? What is that for? Now it's time for the substructure. For that I cut 6 sideboards that are 25mm thick. I will mill T-slots into the two long sides. One of them is for the fence, the other doesn't have a purpose yet. I just wanted to have it in case I do need it for something. First I glue, then I screw the outer sides together. So I will add two struts here. You have to keep in mind, or you should keep in mind, that you leave some space here in this area. So that you, for example, can switch the blade of the circular saw or when you have to do something else, just so you can work with your tools. For the legs I use 70 by 70 millimeter wood. As the table saw shall have the same height as my workbench, I saw the legs to the appropriate length. I'm connecting these with the substructure, but I don't glue them to the tabletop in case I would like to replace this one day. So I always try to reuse wood. I still have these beams left and we'll use them for the reinforcement. For the connections I use pocket holes. During the build up I always try to stay leveled. Now I just have to screw the wheels on and then I can turn around the table. So now I just wanted to see if this has the same height as my workbench. The frame has the same height. I'm very happy. Not. Scheiße. But this tabletop 
is thicker than the tabletop of my workbench. Platte von. That means the legs are too high. Fuck! Das heißt, die Beine sind zu hoch. After I moved, shortened, and mount the legs back on, the table saw had the same height as the workbench. Yeah. Now I finally am able to screw on the tabletop. Therefore, I marked where the substructure is underneath. I pre-drill holes and counter strike them. Now that the main table is finished, it's time to adjust the blade. With such a digital protractor, you can precisely adjust your blade. I will add the link of the one I use to the description. First you set the protractor onto the horizontal tabletop to calibrate the zero point. Then put it with the magnetic side onto the blade. In my case, the blade tilts a half of a degree to the right. Then adjust the saw until the blade stands 90 degrees to the table. A push stick is absolutely essential and serves for your own safety. I just copied one from the internet and cut it out afterwards. The wood was some old board out of spruce. Perfect. I'm also connecting the saw with the safety switch. So that was part one of the circle of table saw. In the next video, I'll show you how I built the fence, the extensions, and some cool features, which you shouldn't miss. If you liked the video, then I'll be happy if you could subscribe my channel. Don't forget to push the notification button, then you won't miss any further videos. See you next time. Bye.